This week we'll be leaving Scotland for foreign shores. We discover waterfalls, beaches and castles, battle with the cold and show you some stunning park ups. Hi everyone, welcome back to a new episode of Lost in Transit. We're Tom and Iz. A couple of years ago we decided to do up an old Ford Transit, move into it and disappear into the great outdoors. After fitting out the van and escaping lockdowns, we are finally living full-time van life. Come along for the ride as we attempt to live, work and play in a tiny space together while travelling the world. We've spent the last three months travelling around Scotland on an unforgettable road trip, but now we are about to leave and cross the sea to embark on the next chapter. We will be heading somewhere that neither of us have been before. Click the subscribe button because this series is going to be a sure a lot of fun. <laughs> Good morning everyone. Today is a very exciting day. We are leaving our campsite. I'm gonna just have my last shower here and then we're heading off to a very, very new and exciting destination. Come on mate, we got a ferry to catch. Oh, I haven't told the viewers yet. So, we have got a ferry to catch. That's our next destination. We're going to the ferry port. We set ourselves a deadline for 9.30 to leave and we are leaving at 9.32. So we're on track. I didn't dilly dally too much in the shower. Time for the big reveal where we're going. We are heading to Northern Ireland. Already we've seen multiple places where we just want to pull over, so we decided to pull over here and see what's around. It's, it feels like we're starting van life all over again, like that feeling when you set off for a new adventure, that's mm. what it feels yeah, like. Yeah, we've been in Scotland for quite a while. It was getting a bit too comfortable. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's nice to mix it up and... Uh... I mean, I, I feel like I could do Scotland all over again. But yeah, it's, definitely. It's that, you know when you're setting off on a, on a new trip or you're about to go on holiday or you arrive in a new country, it feels like that. It's so new and... I feel like it might be quite similar landscapes to Scotland, but it's, it's really cool to be somewhere new. Yeah. I'm but kind of thinking, should we have a little bit of lunch on that bench? Just had a jug of potato. <laughs> Stripped us off a little leftover lunch. A bit low on flies we've got. Right, sweet corn, avocado, vegan milk, vegan cheese, and a one slice of vegan have in there. Kind of random. First stop in Northern Ireland, Cranny Falls. Let's go. We're just on a high because we love being in this rural place. Oh, we've just been in cities for so long. And it also it's like places we know quite well for the last like two weeks or maybe three. We've been places we know and just in the cities. So it's really nice to be somewhere new. So here we are at Cranny Falls. Ah, oh, it's good to be back doing what we like doing, finding waterfalls and stomping through the nature. I think Ireland's going to be pretty cool. I'm looking the wrong way. <laughs> it's behind you.
This is pretty much as soon as you get off the ferry into Ireland. Um, we just wanted to find something to do before it got too dark. But I guess we should think about where we're going to stay tonight um, and see what else is along the coast. We're basically just going to follow the coast the whole way around Ireland now. Um, so let's see what's next. I love Northern Ireland! Wowee, it is getting dark quick. Um, it's like five o'clock and it's pitch black outside. We've found a really nice place to park up and I can't wait to see it in the daylight because it was all really pretty dark when we got here, but we're like right on the seafront. It looks like a smurf. Yeah. <laughs> it's so like early, but it's so easy to just go into bed early because it's dark mm. out there. Since our visit to Glasgow, we've been a little under the weather. I think our friend gave us a bit of a cold. Um, but yeah, we've been doing COVID Such tests. A it, it was Mark. Know Mark, <laughs> you know who it was. Mark, we know it was you. You're in a lot of trouble because you feel me. rotten. Mark, I don't blame you one bit. <laughs> Look at you. <laughs> you didn't give this to me, but someone did. And I don't it's know where or who, but it's not very nice. And I feel ill, but it's not COVID. I don't actually have any of the three main symptoms. Yeah. And I did a test, but... If someone comes and knocks on the door now, though, I'm going to get arrested because there's a severed head in my bed. <laughs> We're saving that one off, have you? Yeah, I thought of that it's a couple of days ago. Now, I want you to make me a dinner, really nice cooked dinner with some vegetables and a hot drink to go on the side and then pop a film on. More like just a film and the packet of crisps. Oh, I need health. I need health I as well. Get health food. It's very rare that I cook because I'm so good that it's actually a little bit embarrassing to Isabel, so um, I don't do it too often. Tom, don't do that because you might rip off the winnings. That's the craziest yeah, thing I've ever anything. seen. I'm not going to win anything. What do I need to do? Use a 2p. I don't have a 2p. Match the winning symbol to any of your symbols to win a prize. Okay, well, if I've got a tree, I'm in the money here. Okay. I've got four trees. What? Wait. All... Wait. Five pound. Five big pounders. Yeah, boy. Five pound. Tom's been slaving away even though he doesn't feel very well and cooked me up a storm. This meatballs, courgette, tomato, pepper, olive, pasta, linguine actually. It's so, 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 so yum. Thanks, Tom. Hi, everyone. Morning. We are playing with fire today because the gas has been low. It normally lasts us a month, this like, gas bottle, and it's now five days over that month. We carry two gas bottles to prevent this issue from happening, but every time we run out, we can't find anywhere to top it up, and then we forget, and the time goes on. So please say we can have coffee this morning. We're gonna have to be very stingy with the gas, but look at this view. Look at that, man. Look So this is our first park up in Northern Ireland and it's a bit of a stunner really. Um, yeah, so we've got the view of the sea out the window, but there's a little wall there so it stays quite private. So we've just had a pretty chill day, well I have. Uh, Isabel's been working, she's just about to finish. Um, we're starting to lose the light already. Um, we are gonna drive about 15 minutes down the road to the Dark Hedges, which is a filming location on Game of Thrones and hopefully we can get there before we lose all the light. But this will be an amazing park up. Um, and then hopefully we'll find somewhere else really nice to park tonight as well. Oh, oh sorry, I'm just the van. Just waiting to finish work, doing a little sweep while away. Woo I love I love Northern Ireland so much. So this is a road with very old uh, beech trees lining it and it was used for one of the scenes in Game of Thrones and it's quite a popular tourist destination in Northern Ireland to the point where people keep driving up the road and apparently it's killing the roots underneath the trees and actually destroying it but we're not going to drive down it we're just going to go and have a look <laughs> <laughs> 
so we can walk down it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go. So this is a really popular spot, and you can see the size of the car park. We're the only ones here. So this might be one of the benefits of coming late, but also in winter, we're gonna have the place to ourselves, hopefully. I mean, I'm, I'm a summer spirit, but I actually am enjoying traveling in the winter. I like the fact that we're the only ones at places. It's kind of cool to see yeah. stuff quiet. And it's quite cozy wrapping up a wall. This is pretty epic. I, I knew it was going to be cool because it's on a film set, but didn't expect to be this good. Which part of Game of Thrones is filmed here, Tom? So this is the bit where they leave, so it's, I think it's in the first episode, when they leave uh, Winterfell and they're traveling down the King's Road. This is the King's Road. Yeah, definitely worth a walk up the Dark Hedges route. It's quite nice to be here and at such a quiet time and just walk up and imagine what it was like with all the film set here, all the crew. Hello world! What a lovely place to wake up in. Surrounded by gorgeous countryside. There's a lovely beach. And we're just at this like National Trust spot. I only get a 10 minute break at work, so I gotta go back. So Isabel has finished work and we have driven just like two minutes from where we are camping uh, to a place called Ballantoy and this is where they did a lot of the filming for the Isle of Pike in Game of Thrones so uh, it's all like Fionn Greyjoy when he goes home. <laughs> What's funny? The guy's wheelie really jumped off in Game of Thrones. I remember that bit being so horrible. <laughs> Tom's getting annoying me because he's feeling really ill and I'm better now. So I'm like, I'm top of the world again. But um, I'm glad that we got down here because it said unsuitable for camper van. I don't think you'd want to do this in like a big motorhome, but oh, we were fine in our little van. Classic Northern Ireland. We are just driving to our park up for the night and we've spotted this amazing castle on the cliffs against the sunset it looks beautiful we're at our new parking spot for the night another beautiful coastal spot we've just been following the causeway coastal route all along and we've actually just passed the giants causeway car park but what we've decided to do is park in the nearby town and then we're just going to walk there in the morning the bamba she's so pooey Mm, there's toilets. Bingo. <laughs> Dora, you. Uh, Come on, everyone. Let's go to the toilet. <laughs> This is the comfiest mine you've ever met today. He's not feeling very well. Shush, let me speak. <laughs> there's nothing worse than feeling really ill and having Isabel buzzing around, like trying to make you do things. I'm so tired and poorly, and it's just like so much energy. Hopefully, tomorrow, and big rest, and then tomorrow I'll be ready, ready to go. <laughs> A day of full activities tomorrow. So, so we've woke up quite early. Uh, and the, it's just starting to get light and we're going to get do a nice like coastal walk up to the Giants Causeway get in for free and we've had a nice walk and we're hopefully going to beat the crowds because we're going early I was painting me 
me that we're not following the Giants Causeway signs. There's loads of signs that point that way. And Tom's telling me to go this way, so I'm a bit nervous. So we've just arrived at the visitor centre and uh, we don't have to pay because, oh, actually, uh, we don't have to pay because we came on foot. Uh, it was about a 30 minute walk from where we parked up. And fast walk. Fast walk, as well, couldn't keep up. I'm feeling quite a lot better today. The cold is uh, coming to an end, I think. My ears are still a little bit not equalising properly, but I'm feeling a hundred times better than yesterday. Finally, you don't want to have fun again. I refuse to have fun. Giant's Causeway is made up of these giant basalt columns that have melted and thawed, melted and thawed over the years. And the myth is that the giants here wanted to go and attack the Scottish giants. So they built this road out to Scotland. They didn't quite make it, did they? time in the morning when the sunrise colours in the sky are just stunning and we are the only ones here which is pretty cool. Whoa the weather has turned it's very rainy um, and we're just going up the shepherd's path uh, it's a bit of a circular route but there's a sign saying no entry we've been a bit naughty and gone past the no entry signs uh, giving it a risk but we think this might be why it's closed. My heart is racing, I hate being naughty. Isabel is such a scaredy cat. She's scared that we're going to get told off, but... I hate being told off. Weather report, extremely wet. Jeans are stuck on my legs. We have driven for 30 minutes down the road, uh, down the coast um, to a new spot, Mazden Temple, I think it's called. Don't know anything about it. It's free entry here. Uh, if you park at the other car park, it's five pound parking, but this one is free. So come to the Bishop's Gate car park. Or if you want to support the National Trust, pay your parking money. We're just stinky. So this place is uh, pretty cool. It's some urn or some big posh landowner uh, built a house up here and some other cool stuff, but now they're all in ruins and there's a princess who lives here instead. Oh, hi there, I didn't see that. Um, yeah, if you want to come look at my house, you can. No biggie, really. Apparently this Earl of Bishop, he was a right little 
laugh, a little banner. He would sprinkle flour in the corridors of the guest guest quarters, and then in the morning he'd be able to see who was visiting who at night. was built by the Earl Bishop but it's apparently getting closer and closer to the edge over the years so perhaps in many years to come it won't actually be here, It'll be in the sea. the car unfortunately it was a little bit too windy to fly the drone out, like out over the cliff so I was just uh didn't think I'd ever get it back from up there we could see the beach and it looked like you could well you can park cars on the beach this is really cool you should come here if you are in the area it says no overnight parking or camping but it's still amazing to just come for the day Drive free service. It's a bit windy out there. It's not, it's lovely. We've driven about another 30 minutes down the road um, and we've gone inland a little bit. We are at Ness Park, which is about 20 minutes outside of London Derry slash Derry. Um, and we were recommended this spot by one of Isabel's mates, Christina, yeah, who apparently she lives, lives near here. Um, so yeah, we're gonna go and explore this place. Apparently there's a nice waterfall, so let's go explore. Ness Waterfall, the tallest waterfall in Northern Ireland. Next stop, Derry. We've arrived in Derry in this really nice little parking space. It's by some allotments and a park. It feels quite safe, quite a nice place to leave the van overnight. It's so pretty here and we're really near the Peace Bridge and we've got views over the city. It's a beautiful sunset. We have just arrived into Derry slash London Derry. Um, this is a place which has a very troubled history. Until very recently there's been a lot of conflict here. Um, and that's all the pop what part of the uh, Good Friday Agreement and stuff is all about. Just went to a little exhibition in the Guild Hall, and the Guild Hall was amazing. Uh, it was a really interesting, like history of Derry and dating back to the plantations. One of uh, the best preserved uh, wall cities in Europe, and that's partly because it is also one of the most recent walled cities ever built. It was built to protect the English and Scottish settlers 
from the Irish population. It was attacked three times but uh, never was never conquered so sometimes it's called the Maiden City. had a really nice curry and a pint in a lovely Irish bar and walk back along the Peace Bridge. It's so early but we're actually so tired, we've done so much walking today that we're just going to chill out and actually watch Dairy Girls, highly recommend. This is where we will leave this week's vlog. If you've enjoyed this video please give it a like and if you'd like to see what we get up to next week when we enter the Republic of Ireland and begin the 2,500 kilometre Wild Atlantic Way, make sure to subscribe. Thank you all very much for watching and we'll see you next week.